actually played some golf the last couple of days and I saw something that just needed to be talked about. I was playing with one of my regular students who I play, you know, a fair amount of golf with and I play with my brother Ken and this student and my brother Ken have been engaging in some, some uh, pretty strong and serious matches when they play and they play both a metal match and a match, match play. So uh, because of the metal match, they got, which is counting every stroke versus match play playing by the hole, you make a double, triple, a quarter, whatever, that's really hurting you in the metal, but it only costs you one hole. Well, they're getting into these, to these matches. There's a little bit of good, you know, healthy banter going back and forth, a little bit of ribbing uh, that they do with each other. And, and it's serious, and, and, you know, there's hardly no money involved. It's mostly, it's mostly playing for, for the glory and, and, and the bragging rights. Well, this student tends to play and be aggressive in his game in terms of hitting the ball long. He's much longer than, than my brother Ken and even myself, and, and he tends to really, to really go after the ball, especially with the driver. And in the last, couple, the last three or four times they played, Ken's won, and it's because this golfer, and he'll remain nameless, but I'm sure he'll know who he is when we're talking to him, when he sees his video, when he decides to step up on that tee and let the big dog eat, as we call it, or just rip one, I mean, there's no telling where the ball's going to go. I mean, it could go from six miles to the right to six miles to the left. And, and in many cases, they're lost balls out of play or whatever. It's just reach in the pocket, reload, and hit another one. And today, or yesterday, the last time we played, he showed up and, and he started hitting irons off the tee. Now, he can hit, when he hits a driving iron, which I'm guessing it's a two or a three iron, and he smokes it, he can still hit that thing about with the rollout in the 240, 250 range. And so uh, that's not bad, especially this time of the year we're playing the white tees. Well, he starts off first hole, ironed it down the middle, second hole, ironed it down the middle, third hole, par three, knocked it on the green, fourth hole, a par five, he still hit an iron and, 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 and made himself an easy five. Fifth hole, dog leg right. It's, it's a fairly long hole unless you can take it over the trees and you can get it right up in front of the green. He decides to go for the green and whips out the driver and all of a sudden the nice, smooth, calm, Good pace swings, good, good, good energy swings, staying out of the red zone. We've talked about that in the past where he's not overpowering his, 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 the swing. And, and may, many times when we start thinking about really going after it, we're, we're start right from the second we take the club away, the backswing is super fast, and then that, that causes the muscles to tighten up and jump into the ball, and who knows what's going to happen. And so everything had been calm and smooth, Great tempo, great, good, solid ball contact, just smacking everything right dead on a club face and hitting good control shots. He got on that tee, and you could see it. As soon as I saw him aiming over that corner, I knew what was coming. And he just cranked that baby up, just woof, snapped that thing away, and, 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 and ended up jumping at the ball. And he hit it so far to the right, it was, it was just reach in a pocket and start over and get that reload going. And so the point here is this. The key is, as I've said in the past before, we all have to know our limits for power. And you can't get in the red zone. I've always said the red zone being a tachometer. You drive your car in the red zone too long, it's going to blow up. Put a pink zone there for golf, and then if you don't even get in the pink zone, you'll therefore never get in the red zone. So you have to know what your power level is to stay smooth and controlled. But remember, what in the end controls your power level? Your brain. You got to control your brain and not get greedy and not get and not get that urge to get up there and kill one. You have to know and understand that the thoughts that keep you out of the red zone are calm, collected. I want to hit the ball solid. I want to hit it straight. I want to keep it in play. My goal is fairways and greens. I'm going to be a do bopper. We talked about that in the video a couple weeks ago. All I want to do is bop it down the middle. you got to take power, and especially the word crush it, kill it, bomb it, nuke it. you got to get rid of all of those words and stay into control. It's all about fairways and greens, keeping the ball in play, in, off the tee, in the fairway, on the green, or close to the green, get the ball up and down. We all are too involved in distance, but the distance gets really crazy when we start adding, like I said, those words about nuke it, bomb it, smash it, crush it, kill it. All that does, for most folks, is going to increase your speed, get your adrenaline flowing, get your stress level up, and boom, you knock it off the planet, or even cold top them, or whatever. So, if you want to play that good golf, you not only got to keep your ball under control, but your ball is kept under control by keeping you under control. Your mind, which is going to make you play the golf you want to play. And the best golf is always played down the middle, fairways and greens, on the green. 
and that's what you want. Be that do bop and keep the ball in play and just get everybody saying to you, oh man, it's boring playing golf with you. All I ever say is nice shot. That's the epitome of playing golf in my opinion. Nice shot, nice shot, nice shot. Down the middle, on the green. You're the guy that they all wish they could be. So get that into your, into your mindset, into your playing set, and you're going to find that you'll be shooting a lot lower scores and making yourself a lot happier. Well, that's it for the search today on controlling our mind to control our swing to control our golf ball. And that's it, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.